Hey everybody, Coach Toolshed here, and today we're going to be doing our weekly check back on Bethesda in Fallout 76 to see what exactly might have gone wrong this past week. And we got some great news this week because, as you can see, things in the Atomic Shop just keep getting better and better. Bethesda really outdoes themselves on a weekly basis constantly adding new items for you to spend money on it is just fantastic and they have some really great items this week here you see the heavy metal pack i mean of course heavy metal january we're all ready to rock bethesda you got it now you let me know how this goes when i look down here and i see what do i see here I can buy all the items on this page for just around $40. What a steal. And of course, the weapons workbench for $10. That's a skin. That is a bargain and a half, of course. And if that's not enough, of course, you can get the glow-in-the-dark map that Todd promised. Glad to see that's in the game. You can get that for the low, low price of just $4. Hang that on the wall at your campsite. What a steal. But let's just jump right into the issues surrounding Fallout 76 this week. Of course, I'm being sarcastic about the Atomic Shop. I hope... You were able to pick up on that. I hope so. Thank you. But let's just move right into the issues surrounding Fallout 76 this week. And this stuff has been going on for a few weeks already. And of course, some of this stuff has been going on since the game actually launched. And the first thing I want to talk about is the item duplication glitches that have really just sprung into the mainstream consciousness. Now, I've seen guys been doing this for quite a while actually this has been going on behind the scenes and every time Bungie has attempted to fix it people have found a workaround now apparently Bungie has in their latest patch they say that they're going to have this all fixed but I imagine it would be only a matter of time until the dupl the duplication glitchers got their hands on another method to get around that because they've been able to do so successfully this entire time every time Bungie tries to put a fix out they have been able to find a workaround so we'll see what happens there but the issue that has arisen now even if Bungie has addressed the issue finally is that the damage has largely already been done because if you are a high level player in this game and you are someone who has engaged in these duplication glitches and you've gotten away with it well people have insane amounts of items bobbleheads where they can get boosts and stuff like that and they can stack all this stuff on top of one another and of course they can also have super powered weapons stuff that they can one or two shot the toughest enemies in the game and of course engaging in pvp with these people is nigh on impossible and what's happened is sort of an internet black market has evolved around these duped items and people have been selling them for cash online. So that is an issue that Bethesda, of course, needs to crack down on because you can't have people running around the game because normal players, it's just going to ruin their experience. Maybe another reason why private server options should have been in place to start with Bethesda. I don't know. Maybe, maybe a crazy idea, right? You said you wanted to have people interact with one another to see what would happen. Well, we've seen what happens is you had a black market develop, which of course was going to happen because you guys didn't have the proper safeguards in place. And that is going to lead me into the main issue for this week, which is actually pretty funny. I got a good chuckle out of this. Now, there's a little bit of a silver lining here for Bethesda. But alongside that silver lining is another black eye. You see, what Bethesda has done with Fallout 76 is there's apparently they included the developer room in the final build for the game and people were able to access that. And apparently this has been going on for a few weeks, but the information just really got out there this week if you're not someone who's into that scene. But now it's hit the mainstream. You see all sorts of articles about this this week. People talking about how they were able to get into this developer room, which they which allow them access to have pretty much any item in the game. They even found different f stuff, plans for future content, and even a human NPC was found in there. So... That is obviously some sort of test dummy for the game, something that the developers can use to mess around in there. But players have accessed this, and Bethesda, of course, has, once they found out about it, they decided to ban the players. And, of course, Bethesda can't have these people running around in the developer room for an online game, obviously. But the question is, and I've seen a lot of people ask this in different comment sections, is why was this even included in the live version of the game? This sort of thing should only be on the developer's end, especially in an online game. Now, of course, Bethesda, this has been found in Fallout 4 and some of the other Bethesda games in the past. So in a single player game, not that big of a deal. People can get around, fiddle around with the files, do whatever they want. But in an online game, obviously you can't be allowing players to do that. So 
course, they're going to have to suspend those accounts, and they did. They contacted some of these players, letting them know that their files were corrupted. But what's funny here is, well, first off, let me give Bethesda a little bit of credit. At least this time, when they're ask, asking players to respond to a ban, the letter was actually professionally done. So... So well done, Bethesda. You handled a customer situation without insulting them or really getting in their face and acting a little smarmy. So that's good. It's good to see that you're making some progress in that regard. Now, let's look at the email itself that they sent out to people. And this is what I thought was funny here, and I actually started laughing pretty good at this, is they let the people know, if any of the characters on this account have possibly visited one of these locations, please describe the way it was accessed in a reply to this email. That detail should provide the information necessary for us to correct any corruption issues on this side and safely release this account and return the characters back to the world. So that when I saw that part of the email, it was just pretty funny because that the way that reads, it almost sounds to me like Bethesda knows that these people got in there, but they're not really quite sure how they did it. It's almost like, hey, can you let us know how you got in to our developer room in the game? <laughs> At least that's the way it reads. Now, that's just pure speculation, but I just thought that that was funny. I thought I'd share that with you guys today. Now, what does this stuff have to do with the current state of the game? Now, obviously, if Bethesda actually fixes these dupe glitches, well, that's what they need to do. But with all these weapons now and all these boosts out in the wild for, for high-level players to have access to, that's really going to throw off the game's economy quite drastically. Now, is Bethesda going to go through and maybe start swinging a ban hammer for some people where they, if they can detect if you have a bunch of duped items on your account? I don't know. I don't know what sort of duping detection that Bethesda has or if they would even be willing to do it at this point or for this just a case where they're just going to lock the door behind it and hope that it all just evens out over time. I don't know what's going to happen. Players of course can trade items in this game. There's really not an issue. You can set your own price and stuff like that. So you can transfer items pretty freely. It's not really much of an issue but this is a situation where People who have the top level stuff are just going to be gods at the game and the people who don't are just going to have to grind and grind mercilessly. Which at the end of the day is what all these publishers and developers want from the game. They just want you to stay on the treadmill for as long as possible and hopefully suck you into buying some of those lovely microtransactions like we saw at the start of the video. Now, we are sitting here, it is January 13th, which means we are basically two full months since the launch of this game and still we have not heard anything from Pete Hines on Twitter. He has still been largely silent. The only thing he's doing is retweeting the Bethesda account and as we all know Pete can usually not keep his mouth shut when it comes to Twitter. So I know I've discussed this on the channel many times before but I still think it's interesting. We're now eight weeks out from the launch of this game and still the vice president of public relations isn't really doing much in the way of contacting the public. He hasn't really made a statement of any kind, and it just is really baffling that this guy who normally we can't keep his mouth shut, now he is sitting here and been extremely silent and quiet when it comes to the release of this game. All we know is what Bethesda has put out in their Inside the Vault updates that they put out, and they said that, hey, 2019, look forward to some great stuff. Okay, they're not really going to be too specific about it, but just let everyone know some great new stuff is coming, even though all we've really seen for the last eight weeks is that they constantly are updating the Atomic Shop. They seem to have no problem keeping that afloat. But anyway, that's all I got for this week. Some of the stuff is honestly just a little bit funny. Some of it is just more showing how Bethesda just doesn't understand what they got themselves into when they try to make an online game. I, I was saying this stuff back in June that Bethesda just never seemed to understand the sort of beast they were tangling with when it came to an online world. They seem extremely naive, and the fact that they're now asking people, hey, could you tell us how you got into that developer room? You know, it just, it's, it's pretty comedic at this point at their ineptitude. But anyway, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. I'm Coach Toolshed. Please subscribe if you want to stay in tune with the channel headed forward, and as always, keep it turned to 11.